again in that spirit of July and Christmas in July, O come all ye faithful.
Our first scripture lesson is taken from the book of Colossians 2, verses 6 through 15. As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. See to it that no one takes you captive through philosophy and empty deceit, according to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the universe, and not according to Christ. For in him the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily, and you would come to fullness in him who is the head of every ruler and authority. In him also you were circumcised with a spiritual circumcision by putting off the body of the flesh in the circumcision of Christ. When you were buried with him in baptism, you were also raised with him through faith in the power of God, who raised him from the dead. <clears throat> and when you were dead in trespasses and was uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive together with him. When he forgave us all our trespasses, erasing the record that stood against us with its legal demands. He set this aside, nailing it to the cross. He disarmed the rulers and authorities and made a public example of them, triumphing over them in it. So, for the young people that may be joining us there or on FCAP, I, I want to show you a lady from South Deerfield did some crafts and she gave me this once. It's a, it's a melted snowman. And the little melted snowman, so I keep this on my shelf um, during the summer months. And uh, once I mentioned, I didn't call it a melted snowman, I called it a dead snowman. She was very mad at me for calling it a dead snowman. So it's not a dead snowman, it's a melted snowman. And it's tying in with this Christmas in July. So uh, for the kids, they're not going to be here for the knock-knock joke, so you're going to have to help me with this. So you ready? Knock-knock. Avery. 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 Avery, Merry Christmas to you. <laughs> hey, it's for kids. It's for kids. Knock-knock. Olive. 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 Olive Christmas time, don't you? Knock-knock. <laughs> Howard. How would you like to sing some Christmas carols with me? <laughs> all right, knock knock. Who's there? Tank. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm all done with those stupid jokes. <laughs> so those are the knock knock jokes for the children. And the reason I got the knock knock jokes is because when we read the gospel, I bet you've all heard of this passage at one time or another. And Jesus says, "Knock, and it will be opened to you." So there's that knock knocking that Jesus talks about, and it, it's all about prayer. And the amazing thing is. Um, Jesus, in today's gospel, he talks about the Lord's Prayer. It's not the Our Father, it's the Lord's Prayer, because in Luke, there is no Our Father. It's the Lord's Prayer. And it's been said that, you know, Christians all over the world, we've memorized Matthew's Our Father. Uh, but the gospel today is going to share Luke's Lord's Prayer with you. And they say that the ones who have memorized Luke's prayer, they could fit into a phone booth. with a tiny little closet if you don't know what a phone booth is. And so, it's the same origin. It's Jesus teaching his followers to pray, but the words are really different. Matthew, very familiar, poetic, Luke, a little bit more stringent and kind of just boom, 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 and we don't memorize it. But, you know, there's that message that you can pray how you want to pray. There's not like magic. You know, magic is you have to say exactly these words. And, you know, anybody who's seen Harry Potter knows you have to say exactly these words, do exactly these things, and all of a sudden, poof, there's magic. We're not talking magic with prayer. We're talking about something mysterious. We're having, talking about a, a conversation with God. So whether it's the Lord's Prayer from uh, Luke or whether it's the Our Father from Matthew, talking to God is what was really important, not magic where the words are the most important thing. It's the conversation with God. And so that, that not knocking that Jesus talks about, the, after he gives the, the prayer, he then tells this story that Imagine you're home and an unexpected guest arrives and it's late and you have nothing to provide the unexpected guest. He says you go out, you go to your neighbor, you knock, knock at the door. 
And you know, the neighbor eventually, if you keep knocking at the door, going to part the curtains, and the neighbor's going to look down and say, who are you? And they're going to say, hey, I'm Joe from next door, and an unexpected friend came by, I have nothing to share with him, can you bring it, can you give me some bread, some something to share with this person? And the guy's going to go, go away, I'm in bed, my kids are here, the door's locked, go away. But if you continue to knock, knock, knock at the door, Jesus says eventually the neighbor's going to come down, give you something, and let you go home. So it's a message that it's not the words like magic. And, and it's this idea of persistence. Not like you gotta, you know, like almost be a nuisance with God, but persistence in prayer. We come to this place, we pray. But don't lock prayer into a beautiful building. Pray every day. Pray formal prayers like the Lord's Prayer, the Our Father. Pray whatever you want, but talk to God. Don't leave God away for six days out of the week and for 23 hours out of Sunday. Talk to God, not knock at his door, because God, unlike the guy in today's parable, God loves it when we knock at his door and try to seek his attention. So on this Christmas in July, when, when we talk about you know, this mystery of God coming down into the world, that's God pretty powerfully knocking. Let's remember and knock back and talk to God in prayer. And today's special music is Gentle Child Jesus in that same Christmas spirit from Bob.
Uh, before we go to the yellow sheet, would anybody like to uh, share uh, joys, celebrations, concerns here? Yes. I just want to ask for prayers for uh, for my family of Jimmy. He passed away yesterday morning, and he's a Jeff's cousin, and he was 54. Mm -hmm. And Jeff and I were really close to him. So he's got a wife, uh, Lisa, and a daughter, so we can just keep them all in our hearts. I'm so sorry to hear, absolutely. Are there any prayers here in the building or nothing on Zoom? Okay. Um, then let us please turn to the yellow sheets and we'll just say these prayers with the first names mentioned. So let us pray for Al, Alice, Andrea, Hart, Betsy, Bill, Bonnie, Carrie, Cheryl, Cindy, Denise, Evelyn, Janet, Jeff, Jeff, Jimmy, John, June, Lisa, Lori, Mary and Joe, Melissa, Michelle, Prue and Bart, Richard and Sue, Cheryl, Steve, Thelma, Vinny, Virginia and Richard, Wes, Wing, the family of Walter Linda, the victims of violence everywhere in the world, those affected by natural disasters around the globe, and we pray for peace on earth. And maybe now, at this point, um, just turn inward for just a few moments of silent prayer um, to add to the ones that you've just shared. Hopefully, uh, to share those prayers that we choose to keep a little bit closer to the heart. So just a few moments of silence.
accept, O Lord, these offerings now be placed symbolically here in your sanctuary as a representation of our love for you and for all people. May you use these gifts for your purposes, we pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. And now, still standing, our reflecting hymn, and still in that Christmas in July spirit, read hymnal number 116, Angels We Have Heard on High. Phone, which was bad. A lot of times the keypad wouldn't even work on the phone. So 
Sharon took me down to the AT&T store. And I was thinking maybe I'll just get another newer, a little bit better flip phone. But the salesperson told me that the only flip phone that they had to sell me was the same one that I had that was cheap and wouldn't work. So maybe he was a little bit better of a salesman than I gave him credit for because it also was, oh, we have a deal right now, 50% off on this new smartphone. So now I'm walking around with a computer in my pocket. It's my Christmas in July present. And then, I gotta tell you, it's exhausting for me to do technology stuff. You know, that, that's why Sharon had to take me. It's like she had to hold me by the hand like I was a little kid in the AT&T store. I don't know what to ask. I don't know, I, when they talk to me, I don't know what they're saying. It's, it's just terrible. I'm like a little child. And so it was exhausting. Then I get home and I realize there's no charger in this package with the new phone. And that Sharon's older phone, the charger isn't the same size. So now after being exhausted at the AT&T store, going home and finding out we don't have a charger, I gotta go to the Target store with Sharon to try and find the charger that fits this thing. So it's already getting later at night. It's getting close to the closing time. And I guess there's someone that works in the tech department, but he's only there you know, maybe during regular business hours or something. There's nobody there. And we're looking through all these packages. And these packages, they're sealed almost like it's Fort Knox. You can't get into those packages. And so we're looking, we're trying to figure out how big the, the whatever the insert goes into the phone for the chart. Anywhere we're looking, we're not really making much luck. We think we've got one. There's nobody in the department. And then this kid comes by in his Target uniform. Doesn't work there. Maybe 16, 17 years old he looked like. He's walking by. And so we ask, do you think that this is the right chart? And before we even finish the sentence, the kid says, yeah, that's the one. So we didn't get to finish the sentence. So are you sure this is the one? We just got, no, that's the one you need, he says. And so we go to check out. And because we're not really sure, we go through the Fort Knox seals and we try it after we pay for it. We, we start to see if it really is the right charger for the right phone. And sure enough, that 16, 17 year old kid was absolutely right. It was like second nature for him. He doesn't even work there, but technology is like second nature to him. And then it comes to setting up that smartphone. I had asked the, the guy at the AT&T store, is there like a manual for this? And he kind of laughed and said, you have to fill this whole building if you wanted a written manual for the, for the smartphone. So he said, don't worry, it's intuitive. <laughs> Baloney, it's intuitive. If I didn't have 20-something daughters to help me with this smartphone, I would have taken that smartphone back to the dealer, I would have brought it back, and I would have got a rotary cell phone with a really, really long extension cord just everywhere I needed to go. I was ready to get rid of this darn thing. So I know there's a lot of possibility with this smartphone. What it is, I don't know, and I guess maybe someday I will, but right now, I just want a phone. But I share my phone confusion with you in this sermon because of that idea that this technology is second nature to an awful lot of people, maybe even to you, and especially to young people, but it is not to everyone. And the same is true, on another hand, when it comes to religion. A lot of people, like us, this may be tradition, this may be traditional, a lot of us gathered here, this may be something that just comes like second nature. But there are a lot of other people, people who have no idea in the world how to interact with religion. It is as strange to them as AT&T Store is to me. And so Christmas in July, it gives us a chance to break in and maybe break down that barrier that kind of separates us nowadays as foreign and unknown and bizarre to a lot of people. You know, Christmas is amazing. People get all amped up for it weeks and weeks in advance. Even the ones who don't get religion, they get Christmas. All sorts of allies show up to help us spread the good news. There are Christmas sales, Christmas programs, Christmas gatherings, Christmas concerts, Christmas gifts, Christmas movies, Christmas decorations, Christmas cards, Christmas vacations, and probably a whole slew more at any other time of the year. Religion does not have that kind of help to help spread the gospel. But at Christmas, Christmas is everywhere. People sing, seem to cling to that message of Christmas peace and hope and innocence and rebirth in just plain old kindness. Christmas makes people feel better. You know, I have a friend, they decorated a tree uh, for Christmas. You know, they, they, the lights, they go up the trunk and then kind of spread out in the branches. 
And when Christmas came and Christmas went, they left the lights there. The lights are still there. And the person said it's because it's so beautiful. And in this time where there's, there's so much going on in the world, it's kind of like peaceful to look at that tree at night for people driving by. So why be it for just maybe four or six weeks out of the year? Why not share it all year round? And Christmas is the message of unconditional love, shared all year round. God comes into the world in a tiny, defenseless baby. You know, God of all power, up there somewhere, unknown, comes into the world as us, for us, and absolutely helpless. And you know, that kind of sneaks in that message of the possible. And when you have that message of the possible, when this happens, when people can believe in the possible, when people can believe in their better self, that people maybe think that, you know, war and more war and more war, maybe someday we'll just get sick of that nonsense and maybe we can think about peace on earth. And then when you get the idea of the possible sneaking in, well then all of a sudden maybe we can become our better selves. So, so why not throw out the reminder on Christmas in July, it's Christmas Eve of all this. There are a lot of people who are confused by faith, confused by church. You know, they, they seem to connect with the promise of Christmas though. So maybe Christmas, even Christmas in July can be like that young target employee who just gets technology. It's second nature, it comes naturally. Maybe Christmas can help us explain faith to people who wonder, why in the world are there cars in the parking lot? Why in the world are there people in that hot building when it's going to be 90 some odd degrees out and it's humid and they're sitting on a hard bench on a Sunday? Why in the world are they there? So in today's first reading, with all of this confusion and this separation and this bewilderment out there, Brenda shared these words with us, or with us from Paul's letter to the Colossians. As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, think of the Christmas message. You receive Christ Jesus the Lord. Continue to live your lives in Him. Christmas, the message of Jesus' birth, the incarnation, is basically us receiving God. That God couldn't stand being that far away from us, so God came into the world as us for us. And Jesus leaves heaven to be with us so that we can connect with God. That's the Christmas message. And people get that. People who don't even get religion get that idea of the closeness of the whole. Christmas may have taken on a life of its own. I understand that, and it bothers me to no end about how stores have stolen Christmas from the church, but it is still founded in what we are as church. And this gives us an opening to help erase the confusion about religion and faith and worship. We become like that young target boy explaining technology to you. We have a chance uh, to make faith workable and understandable to people who just think this is bizarre. The Christmas in July message, the one in summer's heat, not in winter's cold, is continue to live your lives in Jesus. It's impossible to keep a heightened Christmas spirit much past New Year's Day. We try, but we always fail by New Year's Day, never mind every single day of the year. But the message of Jesus being one of us for all of us is one we can try to continue to live into. You know, it's fun, I think, at least singing Christmas carols on July 24th but I wouldn't want to do it every Sunday. But the Christmas in July message of Jesus understanding the joys and the hardships of our daily lives and then being there for us and the joys and the hardships of our lives, that's something that we should always hold on to. And maybe that nearness of God and the message that can make religion a little bit less confusing to those who are going to be as confused here as I am with any kind of technology in an AT&T store or Target or wherever. Christmas in July is for the fun of it all, but it's also the very real message of the mystery of Christmas, the, the nearness of God and Jesus. That's a year-round gift. Christmas makes the supernatural God natural, approachable. So at some point, I'm going to get used to that computer in my pocket, and I wonder why I waited so long to get one. But to get there, to that point, it takes time and it takes help. And for people to get God and religion and worship, it takes time and it takes help. And maybe we can be that time and help. Maybe stuff like Christmas in July can make faith and worship, church and Christ, a little bit less strange if it was strange. 
And you know, maybe you will remind all of us you know, that worship can and should be fun because deep down, God is pure, unadulterated joy. And may we share that always, not just at Christmas, not just during Christmas in July, but always. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And still in that Christmas in July spirit, our hymn of closing is Go Tell It on the Mountain, Red Hymnal number 488, Stand If You Are Able. Thank you.
Thank you.